Hi, I'm Chris Kelly, I'm the curator here at the Gallery of Bex. I'm here with artist Andrea Kelly, and this is her show, Winter in the Woods. And we're gonna talk a little bit about Andrea's process, where she did her training, and everything else about her life. So this is one of my favorite pieces in the show. It's called The Blue Forest. So Andrea, when you came to doing this, like your process, what's, your, what's it come? Because like you have, you're kind of like a modern day impressionist. You have a lot of layering going. So I'm imagining you don't even start with a sketch, you just start with an idea? I usually start with an idea that changes dramatically throughout the process, <laughs> and it ends up nowhere near where we started out. Yeah, I no. Don't let it go where it wants to go, it's a weird thing. So it's an organic process. It is. And it, it, it's not just a set time limit for you, I take it. So that, like this thing could be anywhere from six months to a year, or maybe even faster, depending on how it speaks to you, right? Um, yeah, usually over a period of months, I would yeah. say, several months, something like this, because of the size, and it takes a long time just to get enough layers of paint on it to really work on. Yeah. And as you can see, a lot of it's scraped out. Yeah, I know. I heard stories, I won't show this, but her husband, Mike, gets upset because she paints over. He's like, what are you doing? And then it turns into this. <laughs> and I was like, are you changing this? I'm changing it. I'm like, I can't help it. That's just the way I do it. And it's interesting too because if you look really carefully, you'll see like there's these bits of phthalo green coming through here that are just marvelous. And you can start to see the underlaying and the thought of this process. And it's just it's just wonderful. And this show we, we kind of took off from your, your show in Morristown, which was a walk in the woods, right? Mm -hmm. Which is more of a like a summer into fall, so we figured you would do we would do something wintry, which is this winter wonderland journey where you meet these creatures, you meet a horse, you meet a fox, and we have some people in the back, the women in contemplation, which I love. I love those the most. Um, you know me, I only want to get emotional about that piece with the cat. <laughs> I, like, I like the figure, I love figure painting. It's probably my favorite thing to do. Uh, people seem to draw into landscapes, and I think that's because it's just a little bit less personal, so they don't feel, I don't know, awkward about it, but I feel like if you really want to connect, you know, you have to have the feeling there. You have to have the emotion. Well, well, that's one of the reasons why I'm very attracted to your work. There's a spirituality behind it. There's, there's an energy. There's a presence. There's a vivaciousness. Um, let's talk about him, Mr. Mr. Trickster. And you did him because I said you need to do a fox. <laughs> I know. We came into existence because of you. you well, I just said. Foxes around this area seem to be like a go-to for people with art. I don't know why. But you would see a fox in the forest if you were by yourself. In fact, just the other day I was on the Califon Trail, the Columbia Trail. Mm -hmm. I saw a pheasant and I saw a fox yeah. in two separate occasions. Yeah, it's amazing. I imagine you probably see them a lot because you, like, you have a farm. So. Yeah, but we have dogs, so they're careful. Yeah. So, you know, this whole thing about a walk in the woods, it's like... I kind of talked to you, I said, you needed to have a fox in here, because I think the foxes sell in this area very well, and everybody loves the fox, and you came up with this guy, Trickster. What was interesting is when you showed me the first underlaying of this, there was all this bright, vibrant turquoise all around them, and then all of a sudden, when I saw them, there was this deep, somber, beautiful violets and Prussians going on here up in the top, and it was just like, what, how did you come to that? Or is that just part of your organic process, Andrew? I just... I had the turquoise on there, which you can still see yeah. through the grass and stuff. Um, yeah. I don't know. Just I, I knew I needed something more than that, so I just tried a few things, and that seemed to hit. You know, and I like the layering because now you can still see like all that. No, I know it's beautiful. And it kind of it made an edge even around the moon. And it's kind of a natural color complement. It really makes Trickster kind of pop out and stand out here. Right. It's just a matter. Of, I don't know. I just try stuff, and if it doesn't work, I. I wipe it off or, or leave it and paint over it. And it's kind of funny, his eyes, I tell everybody this, they seem to follow people in the gallery. <laughs> no matter where you are, if you look at Trickster, he looks like he's looking at you. It's just, and it doesn't look, it's, I don't know if that was intentional, but it's pretty amazing. But I love this guy. He's one of my favorite next to the, the, the one next to the Blue Forest. But I, I think he's just a wonderful painting. And um, I hope somebody buys it. That was my first uh, box I ever did. And that's probably why it's a little more um, on the illustrative side compared to the other one because once yeah. I knew how to do it, I, I kind of went a little... No, I love over there with Ranger, you did an abstraction, which is... I love him. I love the way he came out. I think he's wonderful. We'll get to him. 
So, in your, where did you study, Andrea? Like, what are your influences? Well, I went to school of visual art, uh -huh. um, and I was there in the 70s, so. Okay. It was uh, sort of the tail end of the abstract expressionist era. Yeah. So we worked very large. Yeah, no, We no. worked huge, and I just got attracted to that. I loved it. I really liked the big space, and I liked the color. So, uh, you know, for years I couldn't do much work at all because I had a family, so I, I was kind of putting it on hold. <laughs> Of course, with family. And then I think, well, I'm going to start, and I'm just going to start small. Just do some small stuff. And okay. that didn't last very long, but <laughs> I got uh, back to the bigger stuff. And I loved the layering. And I also, and there's a reason why, um, I took some courses at uh, the um, at New York Academy. Okay, it's, yeah. It's all figurative. Yeah, figurative drawing. But they, yeah. they focused a lot on... Um, on um, uh, the old master technique, which is yeah. like building up the layers. With the, with the under layer of mister painting, which is right. monochromatic, and then right. you start layering the thin veils of color over right. over the monochromatic vista, which yeah. can take up to years, which is layering. But what I'm sensing from you is more of a, a very dramatic impressionistic quality with these these. But these that's kind of where I got the whole uh, layering feeling. I liked I liked it, mm -hmm. and I, I kind of enjoyed it, but I, I, when I started working on my house, which was an old Victorian, I wanted to layer the walls. So I started doing that. And that kind of led into the layering. Led into stuff. this with yeah, the Yeah, now I can just, I can even do it when it's all wet. I, I work wet and wet a lot. I just slather stuff over and scrape and, yeah. you know, it's just. It, and most of this is oil too, right? So you know, you're, oil. you probably, do you like allow like a day maybe of partial drying and then go back? Cause I've done that when I work on oils. Okay. Sometimes I don't, you know, if, I, if I don't have time, it all depends. Like sometimes I, I'm impatient and I just start <laughs> putting paint on top of wet paint. Other times I can't stand something and I put it away for a couple of days so it's dry. And sometimes I'll even sand it down with a radial sander. <laughs> I get into the power tools when I get really mad at something. So just for you people out there, like it doesn't start like this. It ends up like this, but she could start with something that looks completely different. And then her husband will walk in and go, that's really beautiful. And then she's like, I'm painting over it. <laughs> and then she'll start scraping and creating. And when it I hear him coming, I'm like, oh, no, he's going to kill me. <laughs> he liked it before, but, you know. No, I think your end result is what's mattering. You're the artist that has you. It's what has to make you happy. It's so. kind of, I like this because it has that, that glow, the warm glow, but it looks a cold. Yeah. Somehow. <laughs> I want to talk about the, uh, this is Moon Dance, right? You call this? I, the only reason I want to talk about this one versus the other ones, this is very different from a lot of your styles. This is more of a, a smoothness about it, and it's, 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 it's highly, highly literal, and it's wonderful. But I love the subtleties about it and the moodiness of it. Um, and you had done this just for the show, so this is just something that just came out of you, right? Yeah, it just, it just kind of just started, and I... I wanted to do a horse in motion, and I liked that that rearing or the bolting or whatever he's doing. And then I wanted to get the moon really like to feel like it's glowing. Yeah, no, no, it does. It, it really does glow. I had a little trouble with the darks because I it, like I put the paint on, and then I would be like, I could barely see anything. It was the the tones are very close. So well, that's I, what I love about it. I think I love the closeness of the tonalities, and it's almost like a moonlight scene. I think you've captured it very well. Yeah, it took a little while. It was something different. You like yeah. horses, don't you? I love them. You, yeah. Because <laughs> saying you do them a lot, and this one is just amazing. I love the texture you do with your horse paintings, and all this with the background and the shading of the horse, and how it's it's got this very high. It's definitely it's definitely your style. There's no denying this is an Andrea Kelly painting. With the texture. Well, my first painting was a horse in kindergarten. Okay. And I was a very bad student. <laughs> the teacher was really old with me and hard to please. So one day she brought in an easel and uh, she said, Who would like to paint? And I said, I would like to paint. <laughs> so I went up and I, I, I painted this big horse on 18 by 24. <laughs> and I don't know why or where it came from because I, I lived in Queens, I've been around horses all the time. <laughs> But of course it was brown, because brown horses, yeah. kids think they were all brown. Yeah. And um, it was really big and it filled all the paper and it was all filled in just like this. So do you take these horses off for real life or photos from real life or are they no. just out of your mind? No, I, I look at a lot of different things okay. when I'm working on a horse. Um, I don't take specific photos. Okay. <clears throat> no, so I you're working from basically an organic memory of you right. studying photos and then pulling it together. And then that's so... 
That's why these horses have such a personality. Yeah, and I would say that's true about most of the work that I do. None of it comes from like just a photograph. A lot of it just comes from like absorbing things like in the environment. Yeah, I know you're a very organic person. And then I like to look at photos and pictures and art and, mm -hmm. you know, I, I don't know, I draw a little bit from each one of those things and pull it in. Well, that's why I'm attracted to you about your art. There's a spirit, there's a, a good, a vivacious vitality to it. I'm just gonna go briefly over here and tell people, these are actually prints. Andrea does prints of all of her work. So if you can't buy a real original piece, she's willing to do anything of her work in prints. And this is wonderful. This is on metal. This is actually on wood board and she painted over the print. So that actually has a surface. That's a little bit more pricey. And this is a print on canvas. And this, I think this painting is bigger, isn't it? It's a larger it's painting. It's a little bit bigger, yeah. Yeah, it's like what, 58, 48 by 48? I think, or is it? It isn't, it isn't square, it's probably like 50 by. It's 60 by 40 maybe, or 60 by 50? It's maybe, I'm not a great Because I know it's big, yeah, it's Probably big. like that. Yeah, that's what I thought. It's much bigger. And here's another one of the horse. I love this one. This was new, you just did this for the show. I did this for the show, yeah. Correct? Yeah. Yes. He's wonderful. Yeah, he's, um, you know, each thing has its struggle. People say, oh, oh painting must be so relaxing. And I can tell I've never done it. You know, it's, it's not relaxing, it's engaging, it's, you know. I think, I'll be honest with you, I think it's different for everybody. For me, it's, 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 I'm, I don't know for you, but for me, it's highly, um, it's highly focused energy and it's very intense. And very it's, intense, yeah. It's very, when I'm doing it, it doesn't feel like I'm doing it for so many hours. It feels like, it's like, say Nothing. it's six hours, it feels like six minutes. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yes, that's because you're in the zone. Yeah, it feels like I'm, it's a highly meditative process. Process, yeah, so. and when you're in the zone, that's how, what happens, and that's the best way. Yeah, to know. I know, I know. But it, it, you can see it; it shows up in the work. It really does. I love this in the back, like how you you made the, the, this like wintry woodsy in the back. It's just it, this is really. I like all this kind of stuff that shows up. Yeah, no, your texture work is amazing. I, I I mean, I compare you as a modern day impressionist. To be honest, I think you're a modern day impressionist. This is Ranger. So we have Trickster, and then we have Ranger. And Ranger is really more you. <laughs> and I know that's why you love him, because he's he's abstract, he's literal, he's he's in he's in the mix and he's in the star. And he's just I just love these stark angles you got going on. And he's fun. He's got this and through all this there's this interesting expression coming from him. And layering. I love the green that pops out through him. Yeah, I love some greens. I'll let some greens go through. That's the fun thing about layering, you know, you can take it out or you can leave it. Well, no, it's it's just wonderful, and I mean, it's like, it's almost weird. It's like you see, he looks like the baby young fox, and this is like the mature, the hunter killer fox, <laughs> the ruthless he's fox. He's got a couple of battle scars. <laughs> yeah, he's got battle scars going on. He's got some eyelashes too, which I didn't do on purpose. Yeah, he's no, no, he's appeared. He's kind of got an Egyptian thing going on, but I love his little tufts and everything. It's great. Um, let's see, what else? Can you pause for a minute, Maxine? Yeah. This piece is just as it's as wonderful as that cat and the woman painting. This, there's something sweet about what you did with the face of this little ball. And I, I when I was curating this, I just wanted him to end the show with a button, like or I he think or she. I think I think it worked really. Yeah, well. no, it's just like it's like it's like one of those little magic moments because this the way you paint this font, it's still got that awkward youngness and this very sweet, innocent expression, unlike you'd see a, a mature doe where it's like, they freeze. <laughs> Not sure what to do. This one's like, I'm curious about you and I'm gonna come see you. There's just so much energy going on here. And then the texture, and I remember when I saw this in your studio, he was nowhere near where you brought him to. He was just a sketch. You know, I had this little idea at the end, it was more like on a bluish green, and I just put white over it and it just worked. Yeah, that's it's, the it's, thing it's, about layering. It's like something magic suddenly happens, and you know, you could be very frustrated because it could be the wrong thing, or it could be just the right thing. It all depends on the influences of the other layers too. But when I saw him, I knew he had the end of the show. There's just something about this the background, the way you did. It's like that wintry mist, of early morning. You see the surprise of this wonderful creature through the. You know, when you, anybody walks in the woods, the, winter has its own set of beauty and, and and shades of color, and I think you've captured that all this whole show. Like between sunrise, sunset, midday, and these, and all of this, these pastels, and people don't realize there's so much color in the reflection of light and snow and ice and everything. It's pretty amazing. 
I don't know if you ever seen the paintings of um, the snow paintings of George Bellows. I know. You know what I'm talking about? Yes. You know how magical he is? That's what I feel you've done. I was surprised to see that because I always thought of him doing the boxing. Uh, oh, his paintings are large. <laughs> or his weird shark eye people. <laughs> you remember those people with all the black shark eyes? Anyway, his landscapes and his people in the landscapes I find very magical, especially the ones that are of the ice in the winter. And I feel you. I feel there's a lot of. Well, there's there's crossover similarities to it. You're not the same, but you see, you you like him see the color in the snow, which is pretty amazing. Not many people do. So. Well, in this piece, uh, it was very hard to photograph to get the purple. The purple doesn't. It just looks so dark. But when you come up to it, you can see it's just a deep tones of purple. With, you know, other color. Now. I think I think most paintings, Andrew, to be honest with you, are very hard to photograph. I'll be honest. Some are worse than others. And, and your type of work, I tell people, I go, don't judge it on the photograph. You have to come and see the work in person. Art is meant to be seen. It's meant to be experienced because there's an energy that comes off from these pieces. So, you know, it's like to look at a photograph and to just judge it, you can't. You have to see the piece. Because there's all the, like, with your work, there's tons of nuances going on with the layering. And it's just, it's really magical. To me, this piece is very powerful because it's Treated big, and there's a lot of them. Oh, I love this piece. That's why I have it on this wall. It's the center. I mean, this piece is amazing. It's just, and it's, it's just, it's, it's really wonderful. And I just, I hope people will come to this gallery to see this show up until the end of the month when it closes. Um, you know, because they need to experience it. You know, it's a really nice show. I'm happy with them, thank you. I, I'm happy with your work. And you're gonna be in our group show coming up, which is my most exciting. That'll be happening in the spring. So I think if you guys all take the ride down to Bex on Saturday or Sunday, the gallery's open from nine to 2 p.m. And uh, we have docents here, Kevin or Ben. They'll be happy to walk you around or just come in and sign the guest book and experience this. You must see the show in person. Thanks.